So let me talk, continue to talk about the GPC. This uh, section, I'm going to focus on the what is called the GPC calibration curve. And I wanted to show you that uh, this one is what is called the illusion volume. You see the illusion volume here? And then this is a molecular weight. And I think that if you look at the fine print, it says a polystyrene. Okay, polystyrene is the one that, that can be made into a, a known uh, very wide ranges of the molecular weight. And then if you look at the details, this is about 1 million, right? You know, making 10 million uh, gram per mole uh, polymers uh, will be very difficult to, to make. So this is a molecular weight log scale. And then, and so you can see that they are, they were able to make some polymers probably a few million, and then that's pretty much the where you, you can go. And then, then it comes down to about this lower molecule ranges. That's about, I would say, this is about 1,000, right? So 1,000 gram per mole. And now they, these days, uh, uh, GPC columns are getting better, so this is uh, about 100, right? So if, if you remember, if you have a CH2, CH, and then if we're just um, making an end with an H and with an H2, this is an ethyl benzene, right? The ethyl benzene molecular weight is, is about like a 106 or something like that. So uh, uh, CH3, CH. CH2, yeah. So this is an ethyl benzene, and uh, it's coming down to this far. So you can think about the ranges where uh, polystyrenes are being used, and then this is uh, the relationship they have. And look at this uh, relationship that this curve shows like this. So they are having a sort of the inverse relationship. The illusion volume and the log molecule weight is inversely proportional to. So for the higher the molecule weight it is, right, so if this is a better way to look at it, by using the higher po polymer with the higher molecule weight, uh, if this one is essentially, uh, they, are, they, are, they are making this polymer to be eluded at a shorter time, right? So if you are here, you are the low molecule weight, your illusion time is, let's say, 10, uh, illusion volume is 10 milliliters, and then if you go up to the high molecule weight, it comes out at six minutes, or six milliliters. I'm just here assuming the constant flow rate of about one milliliter per minute, so that's, uh, I'm kind of using this uh, milliliter uh, interchangeably here, but it's the illusion volume is a result of illusion time multiplied by volumetric flow rate. And so uh, if you have an analysis on this, it is kind of curving up, and it will curve up here, and it will curve up, actually, it will lose your kind of resolution at the end. So this is a, what, is a, what is called a ranges of analysis, which is a characteristic to each polymers. So here, what's going to happen is, is too large uh, chain. Uh, chains are too large, so the compared to the pore. In in the GPC column, and then this is essentially chains are too small compared to the, the in the GPC column, okay? Um, um, and then this is a, with this in essentially size exclusion um, mechanism, which is I'm going to uh, talk about in a separate sections uh, for, for that. So each uh, GPC column can be, you can essentially purchase from the vendors, and the, this is a, what you can see. They are having a, 
due to the, their different uh, purposes. Uh, here's an example, right? So this column called HK401, it works really well. I mean, you can separate down to gram to about 1,000, but then then it, it falls apart, right? So it, it is, uh, this is uh, the ranges that this column is uh, good for uh, separating those polymers, and that's the polymer uh, molecular weight. So it's uh, really targeting the separation for low molecular weight regime columns. So therefore, this one is, you can, you can think about that one has a, this column has a small pore. Small pore columns. But now you go and uh, looking at uh, something that is a larger pore, right? So then, then this is uh, something like you can see here. And then they kind of falls and then they kind of fall. It's up to you that how you can you can do it. There is no strict meaning that things has to be linear. So you can kind of use this one to the regime. But I would say and an up to up to thousands and up to here. You you want to make sure that you 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 can use this. So this column is optimized for something to the close to the million something that close to the 1,000. So every column has its own ranges, and uh, diff using the different columns, uh, you can connect those columns in series so that you can make, uh, the, make this column uh, to cover the wider ranges of uh, molecular weight, or you can actually just focusing on the target ranges for the polymer separation as well. And so if you go to the uh, this relationship, you can think about, okay, log molecular weight. In a very uh, simple sense, uh, it is a, a times elution volume with an offset B, right? This is a linear model. So you, you can have uh, this calibration curve uh, based on that. And but that's not um, people probably uh, use it. Uh, they use a more cubic model, which is a v cube b v square c times v e plus d. This is a I guess a cubic model, which is a you know this one the the first one is more like a linear. This one is more like you can capture this. It's a, a little bit more curvy nature of this, and uh, this cubing model is uh, what uh, is uh, used in the empirical way because that kind of the trace this molecular weight dependence, right? Molecular weight versus the elution volume correlation. So they're using this one for your GPC uh, softwares. And so that they can, uh, they can essentially having this uh, uh, as long as you measure the elution volume, you can calculate the molecular weight for that corresponding to that uh, molecular weight. So what that means is in the GPC graph, let's say I'm, I'm making this one purposely some more twisted. So let's say if you have a, something looks like this, uh, this is a elution volume, and then you can transpose that into log molecular weight that is more like mirror images on this, right? So uh, because of the, this is a low molecular weight fraction, so that's a low molecular weight fractions. So you can put that in, and then from here, which is a, uh, y-axis is a detector response, which is, a, for example, the delta N, uh, refractive, index response, detector response, and then that's, they consider it to be, <laughs> consider that as a way that, okay, so this, this is a DNDC, so it is a CI, okay? Each one of them has a data point, so this is corresponding to MI of the sample. Uh, uh, there's a lot more theories 
has been developed for the analysis of molecular weight distribution uh, from the GPC, but due to the fast data acquisition now, it, the analysis is uh, much more simpler uh, these days. But in the bottom line is you got this M MI versus CI information from the GPC, and then as you know, MN, which is, uh, remember, NI, NI, MI, all you got to do is you can just using this CI information divided by MI that you find out from this each each data points, which is a thousands of data points that you can find out, and then the, and this is a CI. So you can you can calculate from there, and then MW, which is a NI, MI, NI, MI square. That is same as for you to say sigma of the all the heights that you see as a, all the height and then this is a ci times an mi so that's a weight average molecular weight and you can find out uh, this is a what uh, you you will find out in the what the gpc software does they were looking for uh, the base on the correlation between the molecular weight and elution time and this is a characteristic to each column uh, for a given temperature and the solvent pair. You got this correlation, right? So, uh, and then the digitally you are recording this as a, you know, discrete times, and then you can make this as a slices of each molecular weight, and because it, this is all like a discrete data points, okay? And then once you have that, you can calculate uh, digitally to calculate this. Uh, there is a. Uh, Warning, okay. The MN MW from GPC rely on the actually GPC molecular weight from the polystyrene calibration, right? So therefore, if your sample is not the same as your calibrant, such as let's say I'm I have uh, synthesized my polymer that is a polycarbonate, and then I, I put it into the GPC column, and that has been calibrated with a polystyrene standard, and you will certainly get those numbers, okay? And but those numbers is based on polystyrene calibration. And even you want to say what is the lowest to the what is the highest uh, calibration uh, that you use uh, to make uh, this characterization. Because uh, this is all relevant technique. So this molecular weight is uh, actually, is not absolute molecular weight, but it is a molecular weight that corresponding to, uh, to the one have essentially the same uh, retention, uh, elution time or retention time and behavior, and that is uh, related to the size. So we are just talking about the molecular weight that you, you calculated from the uh, measure from the GPC is not an absolute molecular weight. So that's the, one of the limitation, GPC limitation. Okay, so it is it's a, it's a essentially relative molecular weight. Certainly, you can change the relative molecular weight to the absolute molecular weight. Molecular weights. And this is a, some uh, newer uh, one. And the one, one way is by using the, the first method is universal GPC method. But it has its also difficulty. You need to measure the intrinsic viscosity all the time. Sometimes the people do not have a time to do that. Okay? And sometimes, a, actually, the second method is they use a GPC light scattering detector. And with an assumption of the optical constants 
and so on. Actually, you can come up with the absolute molecular weight using the GPC. So there's an improvement um, because of the GPC light scanner detector is now getting more uh, in the hands of the researchers in the late 90s, uh, well, mid, mid 90s to late 90s. And then it's pretty, actually pretty common these days, but not many people know how to use the light scanning detectors as a part of the GPC detector uh, cases. So it's still not so easy. So I just want you to give you a, uh, one of the take home messages is typical method is people do the uh, GPC calibration with uh, monodispersed polymer standard, and then they made a calibration curve and they do the the method that is shown up here to get the uh, uh, average molecular weight of different kinds and so that's the really typically uh, relative molecular weight. Okay. Most people just say based on polystyrene calibration and that's all is sufficient enough for us to have an idea of relative differences in molecular weight using the GPC technique. You know, if you go down to the hardcore uh, characterization such as I really want to know the absolute molecular weight and then you ha you had to do some uh, like two different kinds of method uh, because GPC inherently is a relative method that rely on the this curve that you've shown up here which is a calibration curve